All right. Hey, here we are. Here we are. Okay, another insight today on something that we use. We get loads of phone calls here, and one of the top phone calls is, what can you recommend? Uh, the insights are uh, largely things that we do or things that we've started to use. Uh, this is one, uh, it is Superfly by Scott Alexander. Scott Alexander. Now I'm a big Scott Alexander fan, but mm -hmm. I have never worked this. Um, no. It's a routine, it's a, it's a plot that I perform mm -hmm. close up three times a gig, but yeah. I've never worked this version. I know that you do it. Yeah, the, the version you do is very different because you do yours on the table. Yeah, around a table or up and down um, a queue of people. Th this version is for a stand-up parlour stroke uh, cabaret show. I've seen you do it and I've seen uh, I've seen Craig Petty perform it and mm -hmm. it is hilarious. It brings the house down. Yeah. Uh, the It's Cards Across. It is Cards Across, one of the most staples of magic. If you don't know mm -hmm. Cards Across, it's in the Royal Road to Magic. It's in the back of that, that's where I learned it yeah. from. And the, uh, there are loads and loads of methods for it, but uh, this has got a few little twists in there. Yeah, it's very clever. Um, basically, you count uh, 10 cards off into the, or the spectator counts 10 cards off into your hand. Um, they then count 10 cards into uh, their hand. Um, they've got, you tell them to go out into the audience with the 10 cards. They ask uh, three people to select cards in the audience. So you're not having to do any uh, problems with how many cards yeah, are selected. Yeah. It's just part they of the routine. All. You say just go out and get three people to pick three cards. Uh, so they go out. You have a bit of comedy with that when they're going out, having the person pick the cards. Um, you end up with three people remembering cards in the audience. They bring the cards back to you. The cards, both lots of cards are sealed in envelopes, mm -hmm. and um, they tell them to put them somewhere safe. They do, which always leads to them going down the trousers. Or, um, for, or for down a man, the uh, and you can do this with. Um, no, it's two men, actually, ideally. I was yeah. going to say yeah, you, you, could, want, you, want you could do it with the women. You want two men for the hanky game. Not really. Uh, the starting one you want. Um, we'll, we'll explain in a minute anyway. Uh, but two men is better. Uh, if you, you could use a man where you start and a woman where it finishes, because if she put them down the top, you could mine them going yeah. there. Uh, but the main gag, um, if you watch the video, is that uh, if it was two men, they've both got these envelopes shoved down uh, the trousers. Front, uh, trousers, which sounds a bit, mm, but it's quite funny. It's funny. It's, it's very British. It's, uh, he's American, isn't he? But it's very yeah. British comedy. <laughs> it's very, um, yeah. It's just very silly. Yeah. Uh, which is the only reason I don't do it. It's too silly for me. I know yeah. that you bring the house down with it. And then you can make the cards, you mine the cards going over, don't you? And you them. Because you put the handkerchief thing, clock, uh, silk thing in front of them, and when the music starts, you have to provide your own music, but you can use um, any sort of uh, Superman-y type uh, lively uh, music, which gets a really good reaction when there's some cr crescendo goes off, and uh, underneath the cloth you see this... Uh, Thing rise, yeah. So imagine if you're holding it in front of the guy's trousers and it rises, it rises up. up. Which is apparently the card, just the card. So a bit like a zombie. So I'd use, like the, I'd use a song like Wiggle Wiggle and have it coming <laughs> up and then going across. And then you do your zombie impression and the card's floating across and then it, boom, it goes to the other yeah. person. Then you come back again and do it again. And it is absolutely it is very funny. hilarious it is when, very funny. when you're doing it. And then of course the, the realisation at the end is the cards have left the envelope, the three cards that have been memorised mm. have left the envelope that spectator A was holding and yeah. have arrived in the spectator B's envelope which is down their trousers. Uh, but not just any three cards it's the uh, because the three, three cards have disappeared from the first ten that were put down the trousers. They went out into the audience, someone selected three cards and when that person looks through they confirm that there's 13 cards there but the three cards that have been that have chosen are the ones that have travelled over. Yeah. And they're in the um, pile with they're the, the, pile uh, with the, the cards. Have they got different backs or one made that up? No, they're same colour. Same colour backs. Same deck. What yeah. am I thinking of? Thinking of something else. But you've had 10 cards. 10 cards and there's 10, 13. And 7 and 13. Yeah. So uh, you've got the comedy of the cards flying over, the very easy way as well of, of, of making it happen. Of making it happen. So. Which really just leaves you to play, play around with it. And there's so much, so much room to play, play around with it. So this is, um, this is Scott stuff is always uh, the higher end price point because the routine is. is so strong, isn't it? You always, <coughs> you always get what you pay for, but it's always uh, yeah, and always terribly expensive and far. Uh, how can I say? People say, well, what you get isn't worth it. If we'll probably end up doing an insight on nailed it. Yeah, we definitely want to nail it. We were rumming and in which one to do because we both love nailed it. Yeah, uh, I do this particular one, so nailed it will probably come in the next week or whatever. We'll talk a bit more in depth about nailed it. Scott's effects like £100 plus, £200 mark kind of thing. Um, 
you think wow that's a lot of money when you see what you actually get in the box what you're paying for here it, it's like with any magic trick when you buy a um, you can buy an instructional DVD for 30 or 40 pounds. You can. You get nothing but the instructions. Um, so you do get the instructions, very well thought out routine, and you get the props that you need um, to do the trick. The, um, the, the method is very easy to do. It's the, the routine, the routine, the jokes, the, 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 the years of experience gone yeah. in. Um, to be worked and worked and worked, and that's, that's what you really pay for. That's where that's the money right. comes in. And once you've done this once, you've, you've, it's in your head, mm. you pay for it. First time I performed nailed it, on to a to a room. I think the first time I did it, I did it as a warm up in a very small room with just some, mm -hmm. just some close friends. First time I performed it pr like properly. Just the buzz that I got from performing it, I was like, I would pay that every gig to do mm -hmm. that. It was amazing, and it's what people remember. People will remember this, especially mm -hmm. the two people that are on stage and their families. If you get a gentleman up stage and have this fun with them, then they go to a party. They're going to be like, ah, oh, saw this magician the other week, and they got Steve on stage, and you should have seen it. And, Steve then tells the story, because Steve's a man, when they tell the story it's always better when they tell it because yep. it was three sign cards and he didn't go anywhere <laughs> near you and because Steve wouldn't have been fooled, it was real magic and uh, it just pays for itself, this sort mm. of stuff pays for itself, it is an investment. Yeah, it's one of them, as Tom saying, one of those memory things that people will remember forever. Um, nine times that we go to these parties every week and we think it's normal but these people that are having 40th, may, 50th, 70th may not have seen a magician or may not um, have seen one up close special occasions and tricks yeah. like this make those occasions what people would say oh, I've seen it on TV and I think it, I thought it was fake now I've seen mm. you and it's amazing also the thing that stops this the thing that doesn't happen with these you don't see them on second hand magic sites no. you don't go to um they're not done by everyone, so you don't go to a, a wedding and they say, oh, our friend does a bit of magic and he's uh, he does this thing where the cards move and you don't touch them and you're like, oh, mm. it's got, he's got haunted then. <laughs> then this <laughs> doesn't happen here. You, you don't, don't get random people <coughs> just grabbing this. So, is that the shop phone? Uh, it is, yes. We well, probably no, get it, is. it isn't actually. That's the other one, I think. That's someone oh. at the door. Oh, the postman's here, right? The postman's here. So, we'll probably leave it there. We've got so, we better go. Out. Check so, it out. Check it out.